Welcome back. Well, they may be man's best friend, but dogs are also a vital component of policing. They can mean the difference between a murder conviction and leaving hidden secrets buried forever. Molly Thomas takes a look at one remarkable dog and the cases he's helped crack. On a frigid January night in East Toronto, police boots and badges scour a seemingly normal backyard, searching for eight men who vanished without a trace. It was freezing cold, a lot of wind, snow on the ground. But their case is about to be cracked wide open, thanks to a member of the force with uncanny speed and smell. <coughs> Skills so special, few in the country compare. And he goes by the name, Major. The gruesome discovery by Major and another cadaver dog not only impressed police. Huge credit go to, to the dogs. And, uh, and yeah, so it was, uh, it was definitely uh, great work. It stumped scientists. I think he has an excellent nose, uh, far better than any of our instruments. And so that's just, you know, something we can't comprehend at this stage. And reunited families and friends with loved ones. I'm very grateful that, you know, we have tools like these, uh, these beings to help us find our people. Good boy. To be that effective, these dogs are highly disciplined. So Major is an early riser. 6 a.m., up and out the kennel with his partner of seven years, Sergeant Derek Gadette. Over that time, they've developed a special connection that's unique, but sometimes hard to explain. So do you see Major as a dog or as a friend or as a partner? No, I, I see him a little bit a friend and, and a partner. He's, to me, he's not a dog. He's a dog, but he's not a dog. He's actually my friend and uh, my partner. That bond has helped Major and Derek solve cases thanks to years of training. Hey, you, I want to talk to you. Hey, stand still. Training like bark and hold, where Major is taught to keep a suspect in place when they surrender. Slowly open that door and show me your hands. Or an exercise to find a suspect when they're hiding. I'm under arrest. I got a police dog, you understand? Speak to that guy, speak to that. Step out nice and slow, nice and slow. Skills that came in handy when he sniffed out an Alzheimer's patient who almost froze to death after wandering off in the dead of night. I'll give him his command. Search. Besides finding people, Major is also trained to detect the odor of human remains. And now he's looking for a decomp of human remains. That's what he's looking for. A rare skill set for dogs already in an elite unit. So he's waiting for me to come over there and reward him. He can wait all day if he wants, but no, I'll head over there and make sure. That helped him identify the body of Melissa Cooper, who was brutally murdered and dumped in garbage cans along a busy Toronto street. But Major's greatest discovery led to one of the country's most grisly outcomes. Serial killer Bruce MacArthur went on a bloody rampage, dismembering the bodies of victims, placing pieces in planters. But these planters were so inconspicuous, so ordinary, no one thought to look there, except for Major. Investigators just thought, well, just can you just run the dogs over the backyard in the area and just, uh, you know, for, for a check, right? But it wasn't uh, until when I was watching my dog work that he kept going back to a couple different planters. And then eventually he got his nose into one and I went over and I kicked it with my foot very, very hard. And then he looks back at me and he goes still. And that's one of his indications to me um, that something's coming out of that planter. Bruce MacArthur pled guilty to eight counts of first degree murder. It's the most serious offense in the criminal code. Um, so no, he, he pled guilty, that was his choice. Sergeant Dave Dickinson was the lead investigator on the MacArthur case. At that time, I had Bruce MacArthur charged with murders already, yeah. but I had no idea where the human remains were. 53 Mallory Crescent was an address we were searching on, on a day that might be difficult for a dog on a cold uh, January day. The ground's not producing a lot of odor. We were very lucky and very successful that the dogs were able over the course of months to locate uh, all the remains of all all the missing and murdered men. But Major's fast-paced life means he can't be like every other dog. 
So here's a popular place you won't find Major, a dog park. That's because Major's an alpha dog that can easily get into fights with other dogs. And Derek can't risk him catching a disease from another dog, so that means a lot of alone time for Major. There you go. Good boy. Stay there for a sec, okay? All right. So Derek, even for the dogs, there's a sacrifice, even outside of work. Dogs are sociable animals. They want to be in packs. They want to be with groups of other dogs. They want to snip. They want to play. They want to do all the things they want to do. Major's a, he's a loner. A loner, except on days like this. There he is. Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> all happy to be out. Major has a small circle of paw pals. Come on, buddy. Rory belongs to Paul. A retired police officer. Uh oh. Derek knows that Rory is in good health and won't start a fight with Major. You're gonna give up that easy? Eh? <laughs> He's waiting for the drop. <laughs> I'm sure there's an on-duty, off-duty Derek. So is oh, there yeah. an on-duty, yeah. off-duty Major? Yes, 100 percent He knows when he's coming to work and he knows when he's at home. At home, he's a dog. Hey, My trainers always told me, they said, when you're at home, let your dog be a dog. I don't know where his tongue's been. Yep, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> He knows, like he knows when I'm in plain clothes, I call it, you know, my regular civilian clothes and uh, we're in my, my regular car, we're at home, he's a dog. You know, I don't put him in all kinds of uh, obedience moves or anything like that. I just let him walk, sniff the trees, do his business and uh, just be a dog. Where is it? Where is it? The lead investigator into the Bruce MacArthur case, Dave Dickinson, was so impressed by these incredible animals, he left the homicide unit to join the canine squad. Today, he's training his own cadaver dog, Brakes. Good boy. Good boy, yeah. Who's that good boy? Who's that good boy? Yeah. Okay. ready? Search. Oops, sorry, bud. Good boy. As Dave trains his new partner, he knows Oops, Major Search. is special. Good boy, yeah. His discovery even led police to a man who wasn't reported missing, Karushna Kumar Kanagaratnam. We were able to locate remains of men that, you know, we hadn't even identified who they were on, on early stages in the investigation, yes. Gay activist Haran Vijanathan is also indebted to this dog. Haran, you're a big dog lover, I understand. <laughs> big, I am, I've got two big dogs. <laughs> Major was the police dog who found, you know, those human remains, I mean, what goes through your mind when you think of what this dog has done? They're such talented and, and intelligent animals. So I wasn't really surprised that Major and, and the other cadaver dogs with that, that were at the disposal of the uh, police services, that they did that. They find bodies and find missing people on a regular basis. I wasn't surprised, but I'm very grateful. Major's discovery changed Haran's life. Oh, hello, this is Haran Vijayanathan, the Executive Director at the Alliance for South Asian AIDS Prevention. Uh, we had registered the organization to reclaim the remains of the individuals from the Bruce MacArthur case. He vowed to personally claim any of the victims' bodies if loved ones didn't come forward. That's what happened to Dean Lisowick, who was estranged from his family. Haran held a ceremony to scatter his ashes, and now he's being remembered at a Toronto cemetery. Haran also helped Omar Essen, whose brother Salim was killed. And five months after Major's discovery, Toronto's Pride Parade commemorated the eight murdered men. Uh, I feel very sad. My brother's body hasn't been released yet. It is, I can't tell anymore at the moment because my situation is very difficult. Omar eventually claimed Salim's remains and Haran helped plan his funeral a small comfort for grieving friends and families, thanks to the incredible instincts of cadaver dogs. Major likely doesn't grasp what he's done, but Derek brought him to the courthouse the day Bruce MacArthur pleaded guilty to the murders. I wanted to be here and see him plea. My dog, he doesn't know what's going on, but you know, he was a big factor in the, getting this case moving along quicker. Coming up. It's a job and takes a toll on the dog. The price paid for a successful career. Is it hard for you to think that the end is near? Yes, very hard. When W5 continues. Think the police force is hard to get into? Try the canine unit. 
This elite group in Toronto has been fighting crime in the city for more than 30 years. He can find missing kids or missing people, or he also can find bad guys. So that's what he does. At today's open house, the public gets to see the four-legged members of the force in action. We're going to have demos uh, going on here with dogs all throughout the day. 34 dogs who can sniff out everything from drugs hidden in vehicles to missing or murdered people. Major's also one of our cadaver dogs, so he can do two jobs. Dog finds fresh human scent and a decomp. This German Shepherd Belgian Malinois mix has those special skills. Thanks to years of training with his partner, Sergeant Derek Cadet. But Major has to travel to the U.S. because police in Canada aren't allowed to possess human remains. But that's about to change. Major and his fellow cadaver dogs are heading to Ottawa for a new course by Ontario's provincial police. We get a lot of calls up north, and we didn't have any human remains detection dogs up there. Cliff Sampson started a new program where living Canadians can donate limbs that they've lost from disease or amputation. So the reality of that is that it is not actually um, cadaver material. Uh, it's human remains from a live person. That's what allows us to, um, to be able to do it without uh, going up against any of the, the provincial acts that prevent um, having um, cadaver material. Shari Forbes is another mastermind behind this new course. She just opened Canada's first body farm, which means she can legally use cadavers for training. It's important for them to train in their natural environment. They have been to the southern US and they do have human remains uh, samples that they can train on, but what they don't have is the closest to the real scenario that they work with, which is an entire cadaver in a naturally cold climate. But before Major can start his course in Ottawa, he needs to make a roadside pit stop. I mean, he's still a dog after all. Ahead of Major's arrival, Shari is busy hiding body parts. As grisly as this may seem, Major needs this training to find missing and murdered people. Because Shari has access to a full cadaver, she can bring any part to training, which will only make Major sharper and quicker in finding remains. It's a windy day in Ottawa when Major pulls up to a course he's never been on before. All right, Sherry, I got Major up here. What's the scenario? Okay, so for this scenario, we're assuming we've already found some fragments of human remains in this field. We're looking for the rest of the remains and we suspect that they may have been picked up and rolled into those hay bales. Search, search. Within seconds, nope, Major picks up the scent. Working the wind pretty well. And once he's located the source. Yeah, he's on it. Sits down as a sign to tell Derek he's found it. Yeah, there he is, he's good. training course for a veteran dog that could revolutionize the way cases are cracked in Canada. It's moments like these that make it all worthwhile. Yeah, good job, buddy. Hey, good job. You mentioned that Major is eight years old. Yeah, he'll be eight at the end of the year. Yeah. How long can he run at this pace? I mean, this is intense yeah. work. You got a dog that's jumping, chasing people, um, training all the time. Um, it takes a lot, a lot on it. The dog's not laying down, you know, in front of a fireplace and he's not, uh, uh, sleeping on someone's bed all the time, right? It's, 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 it's a job, and uh, it, takes a, it takes a toll on the dog. Veterinarian Jason Donahoe sees how dogs are impacted from this work. He's just one of a few vets operating a special mobile clinic for more than 150 police dogs in Ontario. Come on, bud, let's go. All right, Jason, Man. the mutt's here. Good boy. So you said you had a couple concerns? Two weeks ago, he had a lot of cramping in his chest, okay. his front, front legs and chest area. And then uh, this week, we had a lot of work, uh, a lot of training, same kind of thing. He didn't, he didn't seize up as much, but I noticed a limp in him. 
Lately, Derek has noticed Major is having some problems walking. Why don't we do our general physical and we'll focus on those areas? <laughs> they are more prone to injuries, they're more prone to joint problems because, because they are larger active breeds. Where they're going over obstacles, sometimes going over pretty high fences, jumping in and out of the vehicle is a big one. And so they get wear and tear on that area. Elbows take a beating. You have the loading when they jump, but then you have the compression forces as they're landing. I don't think he was uncomfortable there. I think no, it was just, I, think I was just, really extending I, it. Yeah, I think he just said, hey. Yeah, and I think he may be getting a little frustrated. Today, Major checks out okay. Jason thinks it's probably just muscle pain, so he gives Derek a few options. So the recovery is going to help maintain joint health, the same with, um, the same with our Omega-3 supplement. Right. But supplements can only do so much. Major is almost eight years old. Most police dogs retire at nine. Retirement's a hard thing for police dogs. The drive that these dogs have and the energy level is not always suitable to being a pet, right? So I say I have a German Shepherd dog, but I do not have a German Shepherd that would be a successful police dog, All right? So he's happy with his hour walk in the morning and half hour in the evening, and in between, he's pretty happy to lay around and just be a house dog. The average police dog doesn't enjoy that. All right, take care. I think in most cases, they're disappointed when uh, their person gets up and starts the truck and drives away without them. Safe drive. You're very passionate about what you do. You oh, obviously yeah. love, love you love your yeah, dog. Yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, is it, is it hard for you to think about that the end is near? Yes, very hard. It's hard for me because I can retire now if I wanted to. And uh, I'm working because he's working. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I'm trying to keep things going. I want to, I enjoy the job and I know he does too. I couldn't imagine taking them right now and just putting them in the backyard and say, okay, now you're just a, a, a dog in the backyard and I'll take you for some walks. I don't think Major is ready for that. I may be ready for retirement, but <laughs> I don't think Major is. So You'll both, wait for both him. of my, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go out together, I think, and that's how, I, that's, that's how I plan it anyway. So we'll see how it goes. Come on, Mac. Atta boy. Atta boy. With Major nearing the end of his career, new police pups are on the radar. Meet Mac, just one year old. Sergeant John Rose is about to find out if he'd make a good replacement for Major. Right now, the ratio is about seven or eight to one. So we test seven to eight dogs for one that's to be successful. John is looking for instinct and drive to make a good police dog. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw the ball into the uh, wooded area. Find it! We'll wait for him to find the ball and he'll bring it back to me. Another quality that these dogs have is called retrieval drive. They wanna come back and bond with somebody. Now keep in mind he's a test dog, so he's not been trained at all. This is all things he does naturally on his own. Yep. See, now he's coming back to me, a boy. Okay, good boy, out. So he wants to possess the ball. And that's, you know, that's ball drive. Dogs in the Toronto Canine Unit also have to be able to work in a noisy, crowded city. So one of the elements that we test the dog for is what's called defensive drive. A dog's innate ability to, you can see the subway coming in now. The subway coming in like that, if a dog doesn't have confidence on his own, that dog might perceive the subway train coming in as a threat. The escalator is completely foreign to this dog, and it's an environment that's, it's got some unstable footing, and the train was coming in the station at the same time. So he did really well with that. He's being very friendly to someone he's never met before, which is a really nice test to show that he's very social. Some dogs will shut right down on a shiny floor environment like this. You can see the light reflecting off the floor. Some people feel it's like a, a depth perception thing, like the dog feels like the floor is gonna fall out on them or something like that. Uh, this dog, again, you can see he's indifferent to it. It doesn't matter. Mac may have passed the first hurdle, but he'll need eight months of training to become another major. A dog Derek feels can never be replaced. We have a bond that no one else, even in our unit here, has, because I have that bond with Major. It's just me and him. We're together all the time, 24-7, basically. So it's, it's, it's a lot of work, but that's what is uh, so rewarding, because you can take a dog that knows nothing and then turn him into an investigator. 
You obviously deal with some gruesome, gruesome cases. Yes. How do you handle that? I've been a police officer for 31 years and I've seen lots of horrific things. Even working with a uh, human remains detection dog, those kind of things you kind of just push aside the, uh, what you see. Ready? Let's go. My dog doesn't, he has no idea, but I do. I know what he did and uh, I know what we did over the years to, to get him to that point where he could do that. <laughs> yeah! We did what we were supposed to do. That's what my dog was trained to do and that's how we got through it. And you know, I was proud of that, but I was happy how the, the circumstances led up to that, from the investigators to my training, you know, all the extra stuff we did to get to that point where someone found their loved ones and they were able to, to bring them back and, and, and have them buried. And you realize, okay, we're doing a good thing here. Right? We're actually bringing loved ones back to their families so they can have peace. All right. All right. Yeah, enough. There you go. Good boy. Yeah, good boy. And Mac, the dog who passed testing, well, he failed at his training. And so now a female German Shepherd named Roxanne is being put through the paces to see if she has what it takes to be the next major.